Working with vectors is something that we're going to be doing for the rest of the year, so I wanted to give a brief introduction to get us all on the same page and to what to expect in the future. First thing that we do is we have our vector rules. Uh, so our first one is we use arrows, and the length of the arrow shows magnitude, and the direction of the arrow shows mag uh, orientation. So magnitude is going to be, let's say if I have an object and let's just let's just draw an arrow this way. Let's say it's moving at 18 meters per second. That is the magnitude. And so the length of the arrow is going to show that. If I have another arrow that is this long, then let's say that one is not as long as this one. So this vector may only be 8 meters per second. And so the length of the arrow shows magnitude. The direction of the arrow shows orientation. And the orientation is the direction that the arrow is pointed. So we, we have our graph. So if I have, what have we been doing with graph? I have my north, my east, my south, and my west. That's going to give me my x and my y axis. And then what we have is we have arrows in these quadrants and we are going to have to define those as well. So the arrow is going to show magnitude and direction. The next thing is we can move vectors. This is good news for us. It really helps. But if you do move a vector, you do not change the length nor do you change the orientation mm -hmm. of the vector. Um, because the length and the direction are shown, by the arrow, you can't change either one of those if you move it. There are two methods when we move vectors. There's two methods. There's tip to tail method, and the tip to tail method always shows displacement. We'll look at that in class. The next one is there's two things happening at once. In that method, that means we have two components, or at least two, and those are called my x and my y vectors. And anytime you combine two or more vectors, that gives you a resultant. And the resultant is what is actually taking place. So when you see a ball being kicked, a football being thrown, a baseball being pitched, anything like that, there's more than one vector on that. That means there's an X and a Y that are in there. But we see just one thing, and that is the resultant. So let's look and see how this works. If I add vectors, so let's say I have an airplane that's flying at 100, whatever the speed is, meters per second, and then I have a wind that's coming in behind it, and let's say the wind is at 20. Well, what's going to happen? The plane's going to be flying south, and then the wind's going to be blowing in the same direction, so the plane is actually going to go a velocity of 120. So if I put this here, now I can take this and move this down here, and you can see that instead of two vectors, one and 20, I have one vector, which is my result of 120 meters per second. So what happens if they're not going the same direction? So now let's say the plane is flying, and let's give it, once again, a velocity of 100. And then we say that the wind is blowing against it. We have a headwind of 20. So now what's going to happen? Well, if I take this vector and put it here, they're going to go against each other. So I'm going to have to subtract. So now I'm going to have put that in the wrong place. Now I'm going to have a vector that is not as long because I've got a headwind on it. So now my new speed is going to be 80 meters per second. So if they're going against each other, we subtract. But what happens if it's two-dimensional? So now let's say I have a vector once again, and this is going 100. But this time, I have a vector that is going to the east. The wind is blowing to the east. And let's give it that same 20 
meters per second or miles per hour. What do I do then? Well, I've got two things happening at once. So if I have two things happening at once, I'm going to make a parallelogram. So let's move that there. And let's put this here. And so now what takes place is I make a parallelogram with my vectors and that's going to give me a resultant that's the diagonal of this triangle. So this now becomes my resultant. So this right here is my resultant. And we're going to do the math on that in class, but that's what we would do if there's two things happening at once. But so what happens if it's displacement? What if it's tip to tail method? Well, let's say instead of an airplane, let's say we take 100 steps south and then we turn and we go, let's put the same thing here, let's, then we turn and we're going to go 20 steps to the east. So now I've gone 100 steps south I'm going 20 steps to the east. So that's going to be displacement. Where did I end up from where I started? So now I'm going to go tip to tail. So that means I can't put it here. I can't put it here. I have to put it here because I did the blue first and then I did the red. So that means I'm going to go here and here. So now my displacement is going to be from here to here. And that would show me this is where I started. This is where I started and this is where I ended up. So to get from point A to point B, I took this path. And so I do the, the, the math is going to be the same for both. But the physics or the concept is going to be different. So we'll come to class and we will get started on these two methods.